So, for this problem, we are going to be solving a Cobb Douglas consumer optimal choice problem. So, let's begin. So, we have a utility function, a Cobb Douglas utility function. The first step to solving this kind of problem is to find the marginal rate of substitution. Now, to calculate the marginal rate of substitution for a Cobb Douglas function, we need to do the following. The marginal rate of substitution equals the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to x divided by the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to y. Now, this requires a little bit of calculus, but the calculus that we use here is very simple, it's very basic. All we are doing is, take, is using the power rule. And um, the power rule is very simple, it's not that complicated. I, I'll show you, and you'll see that it's way too easy, to be honest. So I'm going to show you the power rule as I solve this problem and you can use the power rule and you'll, you'll see that it's not that complicated it's too elementary so let's do this so let's write our utility function okay three okay one more time let's do it to the bottom as well Now, in order to find the partial derivative with respect to x on top, all we need to do is the following. I mean, it's not that complicated. Let me show you. Here's the power. We're going to bring the power over here and multiply it by 3. Okay, that would be it. And then, let me raise the, raise this. Hold on. Okay. And then, after we do that, we're going to subtract that power by 1. Okay. So, let's do that. Okay. Uh, that way, I just wanted to show you what I was going to be doing. That way, you knew exactly what's going on here. That way, you will not be lost. So, I'm going to get this power. I'm going to bring over here. Okay. So it's 0 0.2 times 3. And I'm going to subtract 1 from this power. Okay. Now, for the bottom, to take the partial derivative with respect to y, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get this one, this power over here. And then I'm going to subtract 1 from the power. And that's what I'm planning to do. Okay. So let me delete this, delete this, and just do it. So I'm going to get this one up front. So it's 0 0.8 times 3 minus, minus 1 here. So what do we get? So. Let's write it here. Let me move. Uh, let me scroll a little bit so that way we can get more space here, because uh, I'm not getting space here. I want to get some space, so I'm going to move to the right here. Okay, perfect. So I got some space here. So I'm going to multiply 0 0.2 times 3, and we get. 0 0.6 okay times x minus 0 0.8 remember we got the negative 0 0.8 from remember we had a 0 0.2 minus 1 equals negative 0 0.8 and 
that's how we got this negative 0 0.8 and y we leave y untouched because uh, we're taking a departure derivative with respect to x not respect to y on top now the bottom we are taking the partial derivative with respect to y so we leave the x alone now so 0 0.8 times 3 what do we get 2.4 times x remember we leave x by itself we leave it alone so it's 0 0.2 and y we get a negative 0 0.2 remember the reason we get 0 0.2 is because we had a 0 0.8 minus 1 equal negative 0 0.2 and that's where we got our power here okay. so let me scroll to the right that way we get a little bit more space uh, so we keep solving step by step because I want to show you every single step I don't want you to be lost here okay I'm showing you a little bit of calculus as a matter of fact so we have the following 0 0.6 x negative 0 0.8 y 0 0.8 and bottom we have 0 2.4 x 0 0.2 and y negative 0 0.2 now we had this negative exponent okay negative in order to make them positive we need to bring them from the denominator to the numerator and from the numerator to the denominator so let's do that so we're gonna bring this down here we're gonna bring this up here remember do not touch the coefficient uh, this coefficient stays on top do not touch it this coefficient stands at the bottom do not touch it you just bring it the variable down okay just the variable don't bring down the coefficient leave the coefficient where they are okay so let's do that so let me get more space here and now we got a little bit more space so let's write this baby down so we still have 0 0.6 here now we still had y 0 0.8 and now we brought y from the bottom 0 0.2 the bottom numerator we had 2.4 x 0 0.2 and we brought down an x of 0 0.8 now we multiply we multiply y by the power of 0 0.8 times y by the power of 0 0.2 we do the same for the bottom we multiply x by the power of 0 0.2 <clears throat> by x by the power of 0 0.8 you know when we multiply powers you know what that means right we add them up that's what we do we add them we do addition okay so that's exactly what we're going to be doing here you know calculus is not complicated I think the uh, most difficult thing of, well if you think about it the most difficult thing, difficult thing about calculus is that it requires a lot of algebra knowledge so you need to have very solid algebra skills because if you don't then uh, calculus becomes difficult calculus by itself honestly is so easy so on top we have 0 0.6 y the bottom we have 2.4 x now when you divide 0 0.6 by 2.4 you get the following you get 0 0.25 y divided by x okay perfect and guess what we just found our marginal rate of substitution so our marginal rate of substitution equals 0.25y divided by x now we're gonna use this marginal rate of substitution to uh, 
to find our demand for x, okay? So here's what we do. So now that we have a margin of rate substitution, margin of rate of substitution, now we equal our margin of rate of substitution to px and py, okay? And now we solve for x. So in order to solve for x, we need to multiply both sides of the equation by x, right? x, x, okay? Let me move, let me scroll to the right. We get more space. Okay, so, so we have, we are left with 0 0.25 y equals px times x divided by py. Now, we need to, we're still solving for y here. Since we're solving for y, we want, we want to get the uh, 0 0.25 to the other side of the equation. So we divide both sides by 0 0.25. 0 0.25. And of course, this cancel out. And we're left with the following. Hold on. Let me scroll down a little bit more. Perfect. And we're left with the following. We're left with y equals px times x times 0 0.25 py. Perfect. So now we have a value for y here. Okay. We have a function for y. Okay, we're going to use this function to find our demand for x, okay? So now, the next step is to write our um, budget line. Remember, our budget line standardized form is px, that's the price of uh, good x, times x, plus py, that's the price of good y, times y equals m. The professor here, he said that the price of px is px and the price of py is py. So we, we leave those two alone. And we know that m equals to m as well. That's what he said at the beginning. So now we have here y equals to px times x divided by 0 0.25 py. So we're going to get that substitute y into a budget line right here. See that? And that's what we're going to be doing, okay? Let's do that. Okay. So, px times x plus py, and of course, our y, a new value for y is px times x, 0.25 p y equals to m. Now, what is, uh, so we need to divide 1 p y by 0 0.25 p y. When we divide that, we get the following. Okay, we get p x times x plus 4 px times x equals m. Okay. I'm going to scroll down a little bit so we can get more space. Continue solving this problem. Okay, so we're left with px times x plus 4px times x equals m. Guess what? We have like terms here. This term and this term are like terms. Since they are like terms, we add them up. So it's 5px times x equals m. Now, we're solving for x because we want to find the demand for x. So now we divide both sides of the equation by 5px. 5px. So x, the ultimate demand for x is equals m divided by 5px. And that's our optimum demand for x. Okay? So we just solve the problem. 
um, when I was solving this problem, I was trying to teach you a little bit of calculus. I was teaching you the power rule. Uh, you need to solve, in order to solve Cobb Douglas uh, utility functions, uh, you need uh, to know a little bit of calculus. Uh, like I said to you, honestly, calculus is very easy uh, as long as you have a strong mastery of algebra. If you don't have a strong mastery of algebra, then you're going to be struggling with calculus because calculus is mostly algebra. Uh, you just need to take that derivative. You know the there's several rules when it comes to derivative. You got the power rule, you got the quotient rule, you got the uh, chain rule. If you know those three rules, honestly, and you know have a strong mastery of algebra, you're not going to have any issues with calculus, to be honest. You're not going to have any issues solving these, uh, uh, these Cobb Douglas uh, problems. They're very easy. Anyways, that's the end of the video. If you like, click uh, like and subscribe because I'm planning to uh, continue recording more videos on microeconomics. I'm going to prove to you that microeconomics is very easy. It's not complicated and, and it's fun. You're going to love it. Take care. Bye.